Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making my favorite high-waisted bikini bottoms with stylish straps. So I've already cut out the pattern. I just want to show you that with the straps I just cut them out and I um, pin them to the actual pattern so that I don't lose the straps or get confused with you know what size is what and where it goes so just a heads up on that to do that yourself so with the main fabric I've got the the back and the front I'm just going to place the right sides together and pin the crutch and I'll be sewing that um, with a quarter inch seam allowance always start off with this one it's actually these pants are very easy to make and once you've got the hang of this way of making pants it's um you'll find your whole wardrobe will be this style of making it's so easy and it's comfortable and they look like they're store-bought and i'm going to be using my sewing machine for this whole project not using my overlocker this time so just going to sew a quarter inch on the crutch there and then moving on to the lining so this is where it's really important to be you know kind of a little bit pedantic with the line because this is where your ruching goes so I've got a really nice elastic here it's a woven elastic six millimeters and I actually don't measure it out I'm just going to press Put it all the way behind and once I find the middle there I used to actually um, with Taylor chalk I used to draw a line down the center but I've become so good at doing it without that that I don't do it so I highly recommend for you to use a ruler and use Taylor chalk and draw a line down the center I'm just pinning into place the elastic and then I'm using other pins and I'm using the pin to go behind the elastic so that it kind of sandwiches the elastic and the fabric together. Once I've done this, I'll show you what it looks like on the reverse. This will help you it will just create a nice guide and a nice even line down through the back of the bikini. And we all love ruching. I just think it's so complimenting on all body types just gives it that perfect peach look okay so I'm just turning it over and you can see that I've got the elastic in there and the pin is securing that so the elastic when I go to sew it will still be able to move and be pulled without the pin inhibiting the elastic so that's the back of the shorts with the lining and then placing the lining on top with the right side of the lining facing the right side of the lining and then going to pin the crutch and with this part we just want to we don't want to sew over the elastic so you want to be able to leave like a little hole about one and a half inches wide so I usually sew, I'll put the pins in to show you and then I'll show you where not to sew or where to sew so you know when you go to do this part you're not going to enclose it. There we are. So I'm going to sew on the outer edge but I'm going to leave this middle area free from being sewed. There we are, all done. So there's my main, there's my lining. And as you can see, there's a gap there. Um, if you don't do this part, unpick it. So make sure you've got that hole there. That's going to be saving grace at the end of this project. go so here I've just got I'm placing the right sides together so the right side of the lining facing the right side of the main fabric 
and I'm going to pin these two seams facing each other and I turn the seam on each side so that it becomes more flat and less bulky. Pin that into place. I find if you use the the guide of the seam to pin, it just means that everything is going to match perfectly. So please follow my lead. It just means that everything is going to look perfect and fit amazing on your beautiful body. So here we go, just pin everything into place. So we're just pinning the leg holes and the top of the waist. And then you'll sew and leave about a quarter inch seam allowance. There we are, so job done. I've used a zigzag stitch and as you can see my elastic came out, but that's really simple. I can just thread it through inside where that pin is. There we are. Yeah, so I used um, a zigzag stitch all the way around and now I'm getting ready to put my elastic. I will be using an 8mm swimwear elastic around the leg hole and a 6mm like woven elastic around the top of the waist. I'm placing my elastic also on the back of the right side of the fabric. So there's my woven that will go along the two top edges of the waist, front and back. I like this one because it's got a beautiful return and gather and is really kind of just nice and soft and it's not too bulky. So I'm placing it at the front and the back of the top of the waist. And here's my swimwear elastic. I've chosen a black one and it's so soft and it's not too thick, but it's not too thin either. It's just right. Um, so this eight millimeter is just so beautiful. And I always leave one centimeter on the ends. There we are. So I have popped my elastic in with a zigzag stitch, as you can see. And then I've done the same with the waist and we've still we've got these holes on the on the edges here so I'm just hoping that you didn't sew yours together so keep them open you'll need them for our next part of the project and which is this part is getting ready for the straps And each strap is either a top, a middle, or a bottom, and you need two of each. Okay, so just pop the bulky fabric to the side here. I'm just grabbing it as I had cut it, and I'm just turning it so it's inside out. So the right sides are together and then I'm just simply going to pin them together. I'll pin these, I'll do all of them and I'll leave about a quarter inch seam and then I will put elastic on top. So the six millimeter elastic that I used on the waist is what I'll be using on the, um, the straps as well. So do this for all six and then I will we'll give you space to do yours. So I'm just showing you once here and then I will scoot over to the next part of the project and um, you'll be able to catch up. You can just simply pause <laughs> and catch up. So there we go and you'll sew and then put the elastic in. Always keep them pinned together so that you know which is which, the sizing and where they go. Keeps it nice and neat. I'm going to do the same for these ones. And there we go, all done. 
and I have put the seam in and on top of the seam I've actually sewn the here we go the elastic with a zigzag stitch I've left one centimeter on the ends and using a large safety pin you can turn these babies to the right way out there we are and do that for the rest of them Now once you've done that, make sure that you keep them together and then pin the pattern piece back on top. It's really, really, really important and do the same for the rest. Awesome. So you will be finding once you've done all of them and you've, you're ready now to pop the straps in. So coming back to the main piece making sure that you can still see the elastic, you pull that through. Okay, so this is the back, so the part where there is the elastic and the ruching. I am simply putting these straps inside as if it's like putting inside like a pocket. So I'm starting with the top straps. I'm grabbing the strap. I'm going to make sure that the seam faces down. This can be fiddly, just so you know. I'm giving you a heads up. Um, and then placing that, yeah, that's right, to make sure that the seam is pointing down and then slide it through like a little pocket and then lining up the edges together so this part can be really fiddly I just say, you know, hang in there and you're working with lots of elements there and to just take your time and be really patient with yourself and it will turn out perfectly. I, f I find that if you rush through it, it's going to, you'll end up having a meltdown and, you know, whenever you have a meltdown, things don't usually turn out too great. So just breathe. <laughs> um, don't worry about the fiddling process. It's actually all part of being creative. So um, we've got wonderful fingers and we just, you know, we can just maneuver them around in the fabric. So I have just, this is the second one of the top one. And sometimes I wish I had three hands, sometimes four, because getting the fabric open sometimes is, can be tricky. And then we want to slide that in. I didn't fast forward this bit because I just wanted to make a little bit of reality <laughs> with how tricky sometimes things can be. Um, it's all great to show the before and after, but I think it's also great to show a little bit of the difficulty or the parts that could make us really frustrated and to just, you know, like cruise through it as if it never happened. So I've got my two top ones in. I'm now going in on the middle ones. Again, I'll just remind you, keep the seam of the strap facing down. Um, it just looks so much nicer when the seam is point pointing down and not all over the place, like some seams up, some seams down. It's better to have them all pointing in one direction. I prefer down because it looks cleaner looking down on the garment. There 
there we go so this is the fourth one now with the with the straps I've made this a certain width um, so it should come out as an inch you can change this width if you like you can make them fatter or you can make them thinner um, it's completely up to you with the thickness of your straps also the color can be a different color to the main fabric so you might want to go black with white or you know um, green and blue or white and red it's the options are endless and also with this style of short just let you know that you can make them reversible so the lining can be another color um, I actually don't do that for the simple reason I like the I don't really like the nice fabric against my skin I like just the really soft lining against my skin but if you're wanting options for making your wardrobe more versatile with colors the options are endless leopard print on one side and black on the other that would be hot um, so this is the last strap that I'm putting in and once the straps are in I have got them all pinned in um, and I will sew a quarter inch seam allowance and I've you using a straight stitch and a zigzag so I'll put the straight stitch in first and then I will do the zigzag stitch next to it close to the edge of the fabric I apologize for all the planes going over the top if you can hear them didn't know that there would be a very um, extensive flight range today but anyway that's life all right so we've got all six in there I may just like take a moment just to make sure that they're even the way that I test the even is by feeling with my thumb and my my index finger together on each side you might like to use a tape measure there we go all of them are done yay and we just need to sew them all together done and there you go so like I said, I'm using my sewing machine today. I'm not using the overlocker. So if you don't have like a serger or an overlocker, you know that this is possible. So I've placed my hand inside and I'm turning them inside out. Be careful of the pins. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, every now and then I get nicked, but not really. I'm so used to it. And it should look like a little octopus now. You've got the straps hanging out on either side and you can see the shape. It's so beautiful and complimenting and just gorgeous on the body. It's one of my, my most favorite patterns. Actually, it's one of the most popular patterns that is available on the website. Not just pattern, but also the actual garment is probably the most sought after piece I have in the basic range okay so now we're getting the straps and we're going to just even out the seam and then pin it to one side of the fabric not both layers just one layer Just lining that up so it comes to the edge so it's nice and flush on the finished product. Pin that in. I usually do one to two pins per strap, just depending on how the fabric feels, if it's feeling sturdy or not. Okay, and just pinning them all. And this will give you also a good opportunity to eyeball whether they're straight or not. We are really on a flight path today. 
I can't believe, I think they're all been hanging out because we had no flights this morning and then all of a sudden a whole heap of planes are coming in so I think they've just been all hanging out up there waiting for their time to come down. So now we've got all the pins in place, the straps are there and you put your hand in through the other side as you can see and I bunch all the pins up together and pull them through the other side. Really easy. And I, I love this style. I think because it's so easy to do, you'll find that you'll, you'll make this quite often using different colors and tr you know trying out different stretch fabrics and that's really essentially what it's all about your wardrobe will never be the same again trust me so if you do pole dancing these are really comfortable they've got a really great crutch coverage the crutch is a four fingers width as most of my designs are um, and the ruching on the bum is beautiful uh, it's cheeky coverage there we go. So once you've got all those pins in place and you're happy with where the straps are, just again do your sewing. Um, a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch making it a quarter inch seam allowance. There you are. And done. So once that's done, you should be able to pull it through. And oh, and as you can see, it's starting to take shape. How beautiful. Oh, they are so complimenting. You could wear these at the beach. You will get some mad tan lines, but they will be super gorgeous. And you will feel comfortable and beautiful in them as well. All right, so what's next? So we're just going to do, we're up to finishing off the straps. I always turn it inside out for this part. There you go. And we're going to do exactly the same what we did before and pull it through the hole in the crutch. So just lining up your straps with that main side of the fabric and pinning that in. So don't pin like the two layers together, just pin your straps to the closest layer, which is the outer edge of the main fabric. And it's basically doing exactly what you did on the other side. It's just that you'll be pulling it through a smaller hole this time. Because before there was a larger hole on the side. Um, this time it will be smaller. So it will be a little bit tricky and fiddly because you will be navigating pins. Um... But you'll do great. It just may take you a few goes. If not, you might prove me wrong and just breeze through it so magically. Then amazing. That's what I hope you achieve anyway. And we just had a big flock of birds that went by. I don't know if you're hearing that, but that was, that's nice. I'll take the birds. Okay, up through the crutch hole. And then bunching all the pins together and getting it through the crutch hole, bringing them all together, keeping all the pins together. So using your fingers to clamp down so that they don't move, pulling them through. We're almost finished and which is amazing because this is only like a half hour tutorial um, and you'll definitely be able to fly through this. Even if you have to pause and stop and start at, you know, again, you will get through this and 
you probably won't even need the video again it's that easy so I pulled it through the crutch and now I am just using my wonderful fingers to line everything up and then I will pin the straps back in place using two pins I'm using two pins because the hole is so small to get all that fabric through it can kind of distort where the straps are placed so keeping two pins on either side in this process I highly recommend just to keep it all in line and I would love to see what you've made as well so if you do make these or any of my other tutorials that I have please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram India Jean Designs I would love for you to just me private message me let me know how you're going and share any pictures with me and feedback um, love to make these videos um, more of them and more accessible and easy for you to understand so just sew a quarter inch seam across there there we are all done and here we go drum roll please eventually I'll get around to doing special effects I would like a drum roll right now anyway so there we go look at that it's so pretty all we have to do is put the ruching in and I use a zigzag stitch and once I've made a few stitches up the top I then pull the elastic whilst I sew the zigzag stitch and it kind of gathers all the material up together and makes it kind of just very stylized I find these pants very stylish also because they're black it's kind of got like a high-end fashion feel to them so just pulling just making sure that your elastic that's how I pull so pulling the elastic while you're sewing and taking the pins out as you go along the pins are a guide so that you follow that line all the way down there we are all done it's all pretty it looks like it's been bought in a store love that so just tidying up just poking through the elastic and trimming off any loose threads So with this hole I um, get two pins and I pin at either side of the hole and I sew between the pins. There we go. And ta da! All done! There we go. So there you go, there's your first pair of jasmine pants and I look forward to seeing yours. Thank you so much for joining me on this project. I love teaching you what I make and sell and sometimes it's better to make your own than buy them. So please feel free to visit me, um, indiajean.com for sewing patterns, dance costumes and ready to make orders and I can't wait to meet you.